Hi everyone, Emmanuel here. Welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. This time we're going to talk about how to extend Substance Painter by creating custom filters, with some examples. Remember, if you like the content and want to support the channel, you can do it via Patreon or by buying some of our plugins. The links are in the description. Also, the files of this video will be shared on Patreon, so be sure to check them out. When we talk about filters in Painter, there are two types, the generic filters and the channel-specific ones. Each one of them has some advantages and disadvantages, so let's see how they work. Let's open Substance Designer and create a generic filter. To do it, we just need an input and an output. Then we can add any node in between, as long as we meet two conditions. The input needs to be a part of the chain, otherwise it won't be included in the Substance Archive flow. And there is only one input and one output. For example, let's add a slow blur grayscale. And a clause too. Then expose the scale of the cloud. Increase the samples in the slow blur and expose the intensity. We publish it to create the Substance Archive file. Now in Painter, we can use the filter, either in a mask or a layer. If we add a generic filter into a mask, it will work straightforward. It will take the information of the mask then the layers below the filter and modify it with the filter. On the other side, if we add a filter to a layer, it doesn't matter if it is a paint or a fill layer, it will apply the filter to all the selected channels. If the filter output is grayscale and the channel is not a grayscale one, for example the base color, it will split the channels in red, green and blue and apply the grayscale filter in each individually, and then mix them again, as you can see here. The second way to create a filter is by a channel-specific filter. Unlike the generic one, here we need to define one input and one output per channel you want to affect. For example, let's replicate the same slow blur filter, but this time we'll add a color input and a slow blur color. Again, we expose the cloud scale and in the slow blur we increase the samples and expose the intensity. And before we publish it, we need to define the channel that will be affected. So we need to set the identifier in the input and the output, and they must match. To learn how to set the identifier for a specific channel, we can check the documentation. The link is in the description. Let's set it to base color for now. Back in Painter, the first thing we notice is that if we are using a channel-specific filter, it cannot be added to a mask, since it is expecting channel information. Now, if we add it to a layer, even if every channel is enabled, it will only affect the base color. While this seems like a limitation, it actually has its benefits because this allows you to control the effects of the filter at channel level. For example, let's modify the filter a little more. This time, let's add another input-output pair, and set the identifier to high. And let's do something simple, like inverting the height. Now in Painter, if we add the filter, we can see that even if all the channels are available, it will only modify the base color and the height and the effect is different in each channel. The slow blur is modifying the base color, and the invert is modifying the height. The filters can be really powerful, especially to create some complex effects that will take too much time to do manually or will require a lot of layer operations. For example, with the basics wrapped up, let's learn how to create this paint filter. I'll try to explain the step-by-step -step reasoning, but the filter is a little bit complex, so if you have any questions, write it in the comments or contact me via Discord. And remember, this file will be available on the Patreon. Let's begin by creating the bubbles. So let's create a tile sampler.
let's adjust the amounts, maybe 20 by 20. Set the pattern to paraboloid. Now let's adjust the size. Add some randomness. Increase the position random. And finally, add some color randomness. Now let's duplicate the tile sampler a couple of times. And adjust the quantity. 40 by 40 in the first one. Eighty by eighty in the second one. Now let's mix them with a blend node. A max lighting operation will be fine. We adjust the opacity. And we create an output and connect it. Finally, to have more control, let's add a safe transform and an auto levels. And in the safe transform, expose the tiling. With the bubbles ready, it's time to create the filter. We'll start by adding a gradient linear and the bubbles noise. The gradient will work as the temporal input of the filter. That way we'll see what is happening to the final output. First, we need to blend the bubbles and the gradient with a multiply node. Then we create a gradient dynamic node and connect the result of the multiplication as the grayscale input. Now for the gradient input, we create another gradient linear one and rotate it 90 degrees. Then we add the levels and we're going to set the level in load to 0.45 around there and the level in height to 0.55. This will clamp both the black and white and only leave a small gradient in the center. Now we connect it to the gradient input and we can see we are achieving two things. First, we are clamping the bubbles at the top and second, we are removing the ones in the bottom, only leaving intact some of the bubbles in the middle. This is because of the gradient. This will help us with the transition of the peeling paint filter. If we want more control, we can, for example, add all levels after the gradient and set the input load to 0.25 and the input height to 0.75 and connect it to the other level. Now if we move the level in mid, we can control the position of the gradient and with that adjust the level of the peeling, as you can see here. The next step is to remove the clamp white areas. This will help us create the effect of the holes. To do that, we add a histogram scan and increase the contrast to 1. That way, we'll end up with a black and white mask. And the position will define how many holes will be removed. To use the mask and remove the white parts, we add a blend node and set it to multiply. In the foreground, we add a uniform black color. And in the background, we connect the result of multiplying the bubbles and our input. and as the mask, the result of the histogram scan. And now we have the holes.
One extra thing I like to do is to add another levels between the two blend nodes. I remove the full black color by moving up a little the level south low arrow. This will help us create some clean masks in Painter later on. Another benefit of this levels node is that you can use the levels in mid to define how strong the bubbles will be. And now the filter is ready. And while it will mostly work as it is, I would like to add some extra nodes to control the behavior a little more. For example, as you can see, the output is not using the whole grayscale. So let's add an auto levels and a switch. That way we can decide if we want to use auto levels or not. We can also add a blur before blending the histogram and the bubbles. And the intensity will help us reduce the bubbles definition. Also, since I'll be painting a black and white masking painter, I will add a levels and a blur to the input. Then we replace the initial gradient with the input. and we add an output node. Finally, we also need to expose some of the parameters. That way we'll have more control over the filter. In the input levels, we expose the level in mid and call it damage holes. In the blur, the intensity and call it input blur. In the noise, let's expose the tile and call it bubble tile. In the first level of the gradient input, the level in mid and call it damage residue. In the levels after the bubbles, the level in mid and call it bubble blend. In the blur, we expose the intensity and call it bubble blur. In the histogram scan, expose the position and call it damage position. And in the final switch, we expose the switch and call it Auto Levels. Now let's test the filter in Painter. Let's add a fill layer and increase the height. Then add a black mask, and inside the black mask, a paint layer and a filter. And the filter, select the one we created. Now, if we paint in the layer, the filter is working and we can play with settings to create different effects. The blur will give the filter more information to play with. Auto levels will enhance the bubbles, 
In the bubble section, scale will adjust the size. Blend will increase and reduce the amount of bubbles. And the blur will blur them. On the damage section, position will define the amount of damage holes. The hole slider will define how deep the holes go. And the residue will set the amount of residue that is left on the paint. Now let's add two more fill layers, one over and one under the first fill layer. In the lower one, enable the color, rough and metal. Change the roughness to almost zero and the metallic to one. And in the top one, enable the color, rough and metal again. Set the color to another color, for example red, the roughness also close to zero and the metallic to zero. Now in the layer with the filter, add an anchor point. And in the top one, add a black mask and a fill layer. In the fill layer, select the anchor point and in the levels, move the in high all the way to the left. As you can see, filters can be really powerful and flexible. And if implemented correctly, they can really improve your workflow. Instead of creating a lot of layers, we only needed three fill layers, a simple anchor point setup, and now we can have a peel paint filter that can use a procedural input like a noise or can also be fully hand painted if you want to use a more art directed approach. Well, that's all for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.